With an unexpected fusion of African rhythms and their own brand of Ralph Lauren-clad indie rock, Vampire Weekend's self-titled 2008 debut took them far beyond their Ivy League roots. Connecting at New York's Columbia University, songwriter and frontman Ezra Koenig was working as a middle school English teacher when the band self-produced their first album, a blend of sunny Afropop and preppy New England referencing New Wave. It might have been perfect fodder for a generation of novelty-loving buzz-building bloggers, but Koenig's self-conscious anthems proved as funny and smart as they were irresistible. Naming themselves after a short film project Koenig made in college, the plot of Vampire Weekend is recounted on the album's penultimate track, Walcott. Inspired by the 1987 horror comedy The Lost Boys and recasting it in New England, Koenig's movie only got as far as a mock trailer, but Walcott offers a vision of what might have been, narrating the protagonist's escape from a vampire-infested Cape Cod. The album opening Mansard Roof, also the quartet's first single, is an effective thesis statement for their sound and approach, juxtaposing an Afropop groove with references to traditional New England architecture and the short 1982 war between the United Kingdom and Argentina over the British-occupied Falkland Islands. The Argentines collapse in defeat. The band's Columbia education and interest in global sounds made it, quote, very easy for people to raise the flag of colonialism or imperialism, Koenig said in 2010. But the two main writers in the band are Jewish and Persian, which is not very waspy. Vampire Weekend also embraced its collegiate pedigree on Oxford Comma. Written after seeing a Facebook group called Students for the Preservation of the Oxford Comma while at Columbia, Koenig extrapolated his ambivalence toward the punctuation mark into a broader worldview. Less about not giving a fuck about the Oxford comma, as the first line goes, as not giving a fuck in general, the track showcases the band's knack for eclectic cultural references. Koenig's lyrics move from Dharamsala, home of the Dalai Lama, to Atlanta, by way of Lil Jon's Get Low, with Koenig claiming that Lil Jon always tells the truth. Pleased with the name check, the rapper later sent the band a case of crunk juice as a token of his gratitude. Based on a short story written by Koenig after a trip to India, Cape Cod Kwasa Kwasa contains perhaps the album's most explicitly African-influenced beats. Inspired by Sukos music and named after a Congolese dance, the song also name-checks Peter Gabriel known for dabbling in African sounds on his 1980 anti-apartheid protest hit, Biko. Gabriel Gabriel himself eventually covered Cape Cod Kwasa Kwasa with Hot Chip, adding his own reference to the chorus about the awkwardness of singing his own name. And it feels so unnatural to sing your own name. The band really broke through to the mainstream, however, with A-Punk, a jaunty track appropriately enough about post-graduation relationship fissures. Featured in the 2008 Will Ferrell and John C. Riley comedy Step Brothers, its airy groove came to define Vampire Weekend's signature upbeat sound, and perhaps even a generation of indie rock. But breaking down to a chorus, highlighting the richness of band member Rostam Batmanglij's inventive production, A-Punk affirmed that the group had a singular musical depth that went beyond their bright vibes and brainy lyrics. After the album's release, Vampire Weekend was scrutinized for their perceived embrace of elitism and cultural appropriation. While some critics claimed the group's Upper West Side Soweto was uncomfortably bourgeois, Many others praised their sense of irony and self-awareness. Drawing relentless comparisons to Graceland-era Paul Simon, the band would deny him as an influence, though, like Peter Gabriel, Simon gave them his seal of approval. Despite the criticism, the album went on to commercial and critical success, connecting naturally with new global threads in indie rock, 
and finding a path away from the equally self-conscious heaviness of acts like Radiohead. Outlasting their reputation as a buzz band, Vampire Weekend likewise outlasted nearly all of the blogs that may have treated them as a punchline, growing into a standard bearer of global indie rock. 